Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our seventh and last lesson on the ninth topic of Form 4, which is called Photoelectric Effect. As usual, let me commence by giving you the quote of the day, which states that patience gives you the permission to dream bigger. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at application of photoelectric effect, whereby you are saying that photoelectric effect is mainly applied in photocells. Now, there are three types of photocells. One, we have what we call the photoemissive cells. Two, we have what we call the photovoltaic cells. And lastly, you have what we call the photoconductive cells, which are usually also called the LDR, that is the light dependent resistors. So in this lesson, we are going to discuss the three types of um, photo cells. So let's start with a, a photo emissive cell. So this is the circuit simple. We have the cathode, of course, uh, which produces photoelectrons whenever some incident light of sufficient frequency falls onto it. We also have the anode to attract uh, the emitted photoelectrons. So the terminals of this particular um, photo cell is usually connected to an external circuit such that we can use it to control the working of an external circuit. So when light falls on the cathode, the photoelectrons are emitted. So these photoelectrons are attracted by the anode, causing a current to flow in a given circuit, which is usually connected to the terminals of this particular uh, photoemissive cell. So photoemissive cell uh, is used in one, we have what we call the burglar alarms, such that when an object intercepts the radiation reaching the photocell, then the current is switched off, hence the relay is triggered and a bell rings. Yeah, for example, you can install these particular photoemissive cells on uh, the gate of your home, such that uh, when there is some incident light uh, which is coming to fall on this particular uh, cathode, so you connect it in such a way that as an intruder tries to enter through your gate, he blocks the light that is getting uh, to this particular cathode. Once the light is blocked, the photoelectrons are not uh, going to be emitted, hence the supply of current uh, through this particular photocell will be, uh, will be cut off. When the supply of current is cut off, that means you can use this particular uh, photoemissive cell to control an external circuit because once the current is not flowing through a given circuit, then automatically it will be switched off. So when an object intercepts the radiation, that is maybe an intruder tries to enter your gate, he intercepts or blocks the incident radiation that is coming to fall on this particular cathode. Once incident radiation is blocked, no photoelectrons are emitted and the circuit will be switched off. So um, intercept the radiation reaching the photocell, the current is switched off, hence the relay is triggered. When the relay is triggered, the bell rings and you are able to know that uh, there is some intruder trying to enter your home. Then of course, uh, you'll get a lot and take the necessary actions. Then the second application of photoemissive a cell in real life, it is used in automatic counting of items. For example, this is applied in uh, supermarkets and also uh, other companies which are producing uh, several uh, objects. So for example, in manufacturing companies. So when current is switched off, the counter is also off. So as the object passes, a pulse current is registered on the counter. So you can see we have some light which is uh, incident on this particular uh, cathode of the photocell, such that as the item passes through uh, this particular conveyor to this direction, this item blocks this light. Uh. When the light is blocked, photoelectrons are not emitted, hence this circuit will be switched off. So when the circuit is switched off, that is amplified. Uh, so that simply means that uh, when the circuit is... Uh, are switched off so the pulse current is usually registered on that particular counter such that the number of um, a current being blocked off that is the number of times that this particular light is being blocked will correspond to the number of items that will be counted on this particular uh, counter here then of course we have the amplifier here so when the current is switched off the counter is also off so as the object passes a pulse current is registered. So the object blocks the light, hence a pulse current is registered, which is detected by the counter as one object. 
So the number of objects that intercept or that uh, prevent this light from reaching the, the cathode of the photocell will be equivalent to the number of items that will be recorded on this particular counter. Hence, you are able to count the total number of items that pass through this particular conveyor belt. So this one is used in large-scale counting of items. For example, a production of uh, several uh, bottles, maybe of a certain drink. So uh, as the bottle passes through this particular conveyor belt, it blocks the light, hence a pulse current is recorded because the photoelectrons will not be produced. And that is uh, amplified and counted as one object or one bottle that has passed. So the number of bottles will be equal to uh, the number of, uh, the, of, uh, of current that will be uh, blocked from reaching the counter, hence you are able to uh, count the number of items passing on the conveyor belt. Next. We look at the third application of a photoemissive cell, which is in automatic opening of doors. So the photocells that are used in automatic door openers are simply an application of photoelectric effect and specifically the photoemissive cells. So this is how they operate. So we have our door whereby we have fixed a photoemissive cell. So this is a door that usually opens and closes uh, automatically with the aid of a photoemissive cell. So we install uh, the photo, that is the photoemissive cell in such a way that the light that causes its operation is coming from the other end of this particular door, such that whenever a person enters through this particular door, they block this light uh, that is incident on our photoemissive cell. So whenever this light uh, hits, uh, uh, the cathode of this particular photoemissive cell, of course, the cathode is going to produce what we call the photoelectrons. When photoelectrons are emitted, they are going to be attracted uh, by the anode, hence uh, completing the circuit, and therefore uh, the current flows through this particular photoemissive cell. So it is important to note that the photoemissive cell is usually connected to an external circuit. For the case of a door, we can connect it to maybe an electromagnet uh, having maybe a north pole on this uh, one part of the door and maybe a south pole on this other part of the door. Such that when the uh, photoelectrons are flowing through this particular uh, photoemissive cell, it is going to complete the circuit of that particular electromagnet. Hence, there will be an attraction between the north pole and the south pole of that particular uh, electromagnet, which will simply cause an attraction in the two parts of that particular door, hence closing that particular door. But when a person uh, passes through this particular door, they block this uh, our source of light, hence no photoelectric emission will take place at this particular cathode. When no photoelectrons are, are produced, the circuit will be open, hence uh, the electromagnet uh, will lose its magnetism, hence the door will automatically open. So a beam of light strikes the cathode of a metal surface from which the photoelectrons are emitted, hence producing an electric current. So the electric current will cause our electromagnet uh, to be magnetized, hence uh, the north pole and the south pole of which the north pole is on one part of the door and the south pole on the other part of the door, it will cause them to attract. So the attraction will actually close that particular door. But when a beam of light is blocked by a person walking through the door or the person blocking through that particular beam, the electric current circuit is broken, thereby opening the door. So remember, when a person walks through this particular door, they are blocking this light uh, from reaching the cathode of this particular photoemissive cell. When light is blocked, no photoelectrons will be emitted, hence there will be a gap here and uh, no current will flow through the circuit which is connected to uh, an electromagnet. When no current flows through electromagnet, it loses the magnetism, hence the door, the attraction between the two parts of the door is broken, hence the door will open up. Then the fourth and the last application of photoemissive cells is in reproduction of sound from a film. Next, we look at the second application of photocells, which is in photovoltaic cell. So this is what we call a photovoltaic cell. It consists of the gold film, then we also have the copper oxide. Then we have some incident light uh, coming to hit this particular copper oxide. Of course, when light is incident on the copper oxide, it's going to produce what we call photoelectrons, which are going to, so these are the electrons, uh, the photoelectrons flowing through uh, an external circuit. So we have a galvanometer to detect any presence of produced 
photoelectrons by deflecting. So if the electrons are flowing from the cathode towards the anode, then the current will be flowing from the anode towards the cathode. So that is simply by convection, that electrons and current will always flow in opposite directions. So this is the circuit simple of a photovoltaic cell. So when light falls on the copper oxide of the photovoltaic cell, photoelectrons are produced and current flows if the cell is connected to an external circuit. So remember, we can connect a photovoltaic cell to an external circuit so that we can control that particular external circuit by uh, simply regulating the amount of light that is incident on the uh, copper oxide of this particular photovoltaic cell. Then the cell is used in light meters, for example, in photography. Now, the third and the last application of photocell is what we call in photoconductive cell, or what we call the light-dependent resistors, abbreviated as the LDR. So, when light falls on the cell cathode of a photoconductive cell, its resistance uh, decreases. So, the resistance decreases because, remember, this light will cause emission of photoelectrons. When photoelectrons are emitted, uh, the current, uh, the photoelectrons will flow through the circuit, and that simply means that more current is flowing through the circuit. And from Ohm's law, V is equals to IR, we were able to show that current and resistance are inversely proportional to one another. So the more the current, the lesser the resistance through that particular circuit. That is why uh, the presence of light uh, on the cell of the cathode will cause emission of photoelectrons, hence more current, therefore low resistance. Then the cells are used in fire alarms and also in exposure meters of cameras. For example, in the case of fire alarms, we can connect the fire alarm onto uh, a photoconductive cell such that when there is an outbreak of fire, the light from that particular fire is going to uh, cause emission of electrons from the cathode of the photoconductive cell. When more electrons are emitted, the circuit will be complete, hence the fire alarm will be switched on, hence it will ring, alarming the people around that particular area to take the necessary actions. So this is what we call a photoconductive cell, and this is its uh, electrical or the circuit simple. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that patience gives you the permission to dream bigger. So the quote is encouraging us to work hard for our dream, but at the same time, be patient enough to wait for the results of our hard work. Most of us easily give up on our dreams because we expect instant results. Remember that good things take time to be achieved. Therefore, do not give up on your dream because winners never quit, but quitters never win. And lastly, recall that patience is not just defined by the ability to wait for the results. Rather, it is defined by the ability to keep a positive attitude while waiting for those particular results that you've worked hard for. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll get notified. So this is our last lesson on photoelectric effect. So expect us to start uh, our radioactivity in our next lesson. Thank you very much. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.